Hey, everybody. Welcome to Reflections. It's round three, 2024. I'm here with Ari. He's up and about. He's actually up and about. Yeah, He's I'm on pumped. one. Um, Ari, how you going, mate? What's the story? I'm great. I'm, I'm loving life at the moment. 2-0, and o, flying. Can't, can't ask for much more, really. True. Um, no, it's good. It's good to have you here. We don't see you often these days, so um, yeah. whenever we can get you... <laughs> Yeah, no, I've, I've, uh, I've heard all about that. Don't worry. The absence yeah. makes a hard on those also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone has just been asking, you know, where is he at? Why, yeah, you know, you know, I'm, I'm uh, in high demand. Yeah, in yeah. high demand. Get in line, I say. Absolutely. Uh, good Friday. What are your plans? What are you doing? Uh, footy, obviously. Going to um, enjoy the day at, at, Marvel, at Marvel Stadium and then see where the night takes us, I think. What about before the footy? Um, Probably... Cover other not just quiet, just quiet like at home. Might have a, might have a good lunch. Might go to a pub before. Might go to a pub after. I don't know. We'll see. Wow, oh, yeah. wow, up and about. Yeah, Self, your, your your plans? Um, tennis in the morning. Oh, yeah. Very nice. Game of tennis in the morning, followed by Danini's at one thirty for lunch. Followed by you know, uh, en route to the to Marvel Stadium. Are you a, are you a one hand or two handed backhand? One hand. One hand, yeah, good. Nice. Oh, should have right. asked you what you thought. What I thought of one hand. Like two if you had to, no, if you had to guess. I shouldn't have just uh, given I would have guessed two, but I appreciate that you're one. I have my my limbs are long, so two hands is just a little bit yeah, uncomfortable. You get full leverage with the one. No, I get it. Yeah, it's good. Mm. I respect it. Yeah, it's coming I'm along a, nicely. Yeah, very good. I'm a one-hander as well, just in case anyone's wondering. Mm. Yeah. Uh, all right. So it's Reflections. You want to go first? I went first last time. Maybe, maybe you can. All right. Maybe we, we, can, we can rotate. Yeah, you, we can you rotate. Kick off. Okay. You can kick off. So the purpose of this video, for those of you who are new to it, is we're just going to reflect on memories against the team that we're playing against. They can be wins, they can be losses, and then at the end of the video, would love for you to detail a, a game against North Melbourne that you remember at any point in time. Uh, maybe games that are different to the two that we're going to talk about, or you can add to what we've spoken about in this video. So Ari, I'm actually not going that far away. I'm sticking with in the last couple of years, 2021. Oh, here we go. Round 19. Do you remember? It's like it was yesterday. Do you remember? Uh, yes. <laughs> that was, um, what are the, oh, you, 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 you explain the, the context. I so think. this was the week, 2021, we're still in lockdown on and off. At this point, we were in lockdown. Um, this was the week after we beat Collingwood at the MCG with no fans, the Sergio Silvani tribute game, Jack Silvani screamer, great win. Uh, 2021 was a frustrating as hell year for us as fans. And then all of, like before you knew it, we somehow were only four points out of the eight before going into this game against North Melbourne, who were on the bottom of the ladder. Uh, it was Ed Kerno's 200th game. Uh, Harry Mackay didn't play, unfortunately. So Charlie was not back yet. Because he was up the other end, that's why. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the first half... <laughs> oh, God. The first half was not terrible, but it was not great. It was a bit of a, a slog and there was probably a bit of emotional spillover from the week before beating Collingwood was a pretty big deal and the heightened emotions with it being, you know, tied to Sergio Silvani, etc. cetera. Um, it's really the third quarter and the second half, which we all remember for all the wrong reasons. Something happened at halftime and the boys came out with absolutely no defensive application whatsoever around the ground. Um, North kicked seven goals in the third quarter. This is bottom of the ladder, North Melbourne. Um, you know, Taron Thomas is kicking three goals. Like it was just, it was just awful. Murphy was the sub. Um, Larky ends up with seven goals. And then the infamous Jacob Wiedering to full forward option comes out. I think, Watching this back kind of got me a little mad, but then it actually made me really happy just to see a couple of things. Number one, how 
much buy-in the group now does have around the ground. Like North were walking goals in, handball over the top. Um, the second and third efforts non-existent. And it just went to show at this point, the fan base was probably peak traumatized, I would say, at that point in the year. Yeah, uh, it, it was not a good, not a good kind of period. It was yeah. toxic. I mean, we, 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 we throw the word toxic around, I think, a lot as kind of general football media when it terms to when it comes to describing fan bases. But would you say it was still divided at that time? Uh or was it unanimous? Oh, yeah, because it was No, it was unanimous. I mean, the season was like I mean, we had gone off such a great win the week before, everyone jumped back on board. And then the the what they put in uh for this North game. I mean, I know Harry didn't play. Like just the, and we used to always say it, the application just non-existent. Yeah, it it was it was a grim grim time, and I, I remember watching that, and yeah, that uh, that twenty twenty one and even twenty twenty two was certainly extent as well. It just feels like one big blur and fever dream. I think for a lot of variety or a variety of reasons, obviously lockdown and mm-hmm. footy and just a bunch of reasons. Those that twenty four months kind of all blends into one, but that one that period feels like the real low point of it of a lot of of a lot of things i think culturally especially living in melbourne at that time we had we had all kind of had enough of everything that was going on and the one escape or the one thing that should be the escape is giving us even more trauma to add on top of it um yeah it was not not a good time it was a kind of i I don't want to use the phrase storm in a teacup because I, I don't. I, I think it extends wider than the teacup, if we're going to use that analogy. But it was just a horrendous time, or or like all around, to be a current supporter, especially a current supporter based in Melbourne, Victoria. Yep. I mean, we were balls deep in the review. We knew that the review had taken place. I forgot about um, that. Yeah, Jesus. I actually went back and watched my review from that game. Um, Oh, it's so cringy watching it. It's so bad. I can ima- yeah, I, I can imagine. I can uh, imagine. Which I think is a good sign when you look back on something that you've done and you think, oh, because it means you've changed or you have, you've evolved. Um, but, you know, we were so distraught. The fan cams, just everyone, everyone is just distraught because of what you said. Lockdown had happened. Our lives had been taken away, so to speak. And then we had a an emotional investment in a team that was just not okay. showing up. I think the frustration of it all was kind of added to the fact that things like, I mean, I don't know, we haven't really touched on Larky kicking seven, right? But he shouldn't be doing that. And it's not the, it's not, it's not the Nick Larky that we know now, like Nick Larky that finished second in, or third in the Coleman last year and is probably going to be uh, in the upper echelons of, of goal, the goal tally again this year. It was a he's still young, still relatively raw Nick Larky that had little to no service, even probably arguably less service than what he's getting now, right, which says a lot. Um, he was kicking seven and kicking them from everywhere and Jacob Wiedering had to be moved to full forward, which I, yeah, which, yeah. It's it's fine. It's funny looking back on. In fairness to Weeders, he wasn't on him for all of the goals. Yeah, no, of course. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah. When I watched the highlights, because my memory is, oh, Weedering had a shocker and Larky kicked seven on Weedering, which wasn't the case. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, it's it's the title that full back on full forward, but yeah, in reality, yeah. in reality, it, it's not like yeah. that. Yeah, it, it, and honestly, just like the pressure around the midfield, non-existent. Like Paddy Dow's running around; he was one of our best on the day, but. Some of the efforts that I saw, you know, jogging, like just no good. Um, yeah. So that I was just, my reflection I, on this game. Yeah, I just want to quickly add to that. I think what is frustrating about that game, and also kind of, I think it kind of is a microcosm of the of that kind of second half of the year was that we had we had good performances, like the Collingwood performance. Like, granted, right, first half was a bit average, but that, that second half was unreal. And even the St Kilda game, I think, which is the week after this one was exceptional. And even like the Fremantle game at the G in front of like 10,000 people, that was insane. And then you have this game and then the Gold Coast game as well, which I don't know if that will be brought up if we when we play them on in this in this series. Okay. But I know so, exactly which Gold Coast game I'll be bringing up. Oh, of course. Well, mate, there's multiple. Um, 
but yeah, no, it was the, it was the frustrating kind of to, and then the Adelaide game. Oh no, the Adelaide game was actually twenty. That was twenty twenty. See, it's all mm. a big, it's all a big blur. It's all um, blur. It's all blur. But yeah, the the frustrating inconsistency where we can be really good one minute and then extremely bad the next minute. Probably, it was the tipping point. It it was the roller coaster that this game was the like the the hard the straight down to the bottom full steam ahead and it all just exploded yeah yeah so that's that what's yours um i feel like we we've done we've done two episodes of these and normally one of us has covered a win and the other one has covered a loss this time we're going to be in depression for both of that both of our um reflections because i'm going to be covering a loss as well um oh. probably a little bit niche because I, I i feel like i like the the, the niche of games but um i want to take you back to 2018 the infamous year <sighs> what what a season round four in um, in Tassie in Hobart, uh, Carlton defeated by North Melbourne, uh, 18-8, 116 to four goals six thirty. It was a Friday night, no Saturday night, I think it was. Um, Channel Seven prime time slot twenty eighteen. We actually didn't have a horrendous start to that year. If I'm like. Wasn't 2018? Didn't we kick first five goals against Richmond that year? And we took Collingwood. We only we, we like we challenged Collingwood as well in the early parts of that year. So it wasn't all doom and gloom until probably this game. I can't exactly remember remember what happened in round three, but that's kind of by the by. This game probably kind of put the nail in the coffin of what of any hope that we had had that year because I think a lot of people forget 2017 and 20, 2017 we were actually like okay, we were like not horrendous, not challenging for top eight, but we're like a middle of the road team with with scope for improvement. This game kind of killed it in its tracks. Um I, I played this game last week and I, I want to play it again. Again. Um let's play a game of name association or word association. Um, I'm gonna I'm just gonna throw four names at you. Just first thing that comes to your mind. Um f- first name, cult cult figure around the around the car football club. I think Nick Graham. Nicky Graham. Do you know he- he was good when he played four or five games. He he slowly built into playing. He got better with each game he played. It was unfortunate. It's unfortunate he does hold the record for the most amount of times being dropped in AFL BFL history, which I don't, which I don't think helps his cause when yeah. it comes to that your kind of description of him. Um, yeah, the, the 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 classic phrase phrase too good for the VFL, not good enough for the AFL. Kind of gets. I thought he was out. good enough for the AFL, personally. I thought he had moments. Definitely had moments. Mm, love Nick Definitely. Graham. I like. I, I I enjoyed the way he went about it, the hard way. You know. Good honest footballer. Yeah. Good honest footballer. Um, next one, Cam O'Shea. Just, oh, just like the state of the club, man. Seriously, like, no offense to Cam O'Shea, but like when you you just like, what are we doing? Just these types playing on the list, mate. You, you know, I you know, I I have I could not pick. Pick, pick him out from a group of people. He played for Port, didn't he? Did he? I think he yeah, did. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he did. I, I think he had tattoos. He did have tattoos. Yeah, that's. What number did he wear? I can I can find that. Do, do, do you want to try and jog, jog your memory? What number did Cam O'Shea wear? Because he only played one year for us, so it's it'd be it'd be a pretty good it'd be a pretty good kind of get if you could. If you can get it. I feel like wore, he was in the 30s. He wore number 24. Did he really? Yeah. Who wears 24 now? Nick Newman. Oh, that's sick. That's, that's, that's good by you. Um, next on this list, um, he actually kicked two goals this game. So that's a t- – he kicked half our goals. Jared Garlett. <laughs> Do you remember him almost taking Mark of the Millennium against Gold Coast at the Marvel Stadium with the roof open? No. I don't know. Tom Lynch kicked seven that day. Was that the game where we were like, oh, yeah, no, I know exactly what you're referring to. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's an indictment. Jared Garlett. My goodness. He was, he was meant to be the... The small forward say, yeah. I mean, him alongside Jared Pickett and Michael Gibbons and 
Kim LeBoy and how, how like how how many more do you how long do you have? Um, and the final the final name Aaron Mullet. Aaron Mullet, wow, the footy grid specialist. Yes, he's a he's a cold hero for that game, very much so. Mm-hmm. Um, another tattoos, right? Yep. Left footer played for North, didn't he? He did play for North. There you go. See, it all, Who it was laid out? Together. Somebody was laid out in this game. It was it Mark was, Murphy. Mark Murphy was a laid out. Yep. Yeah. And that was still the time where he was like, no, Murph, oh, we're, we're, we can't do anything this game, essentially. It was, it, was, it was still that time. Um, yeah, so as I said, Jared Garlic kicked two, Jack Silvani kicked one. Matt Wright kicked another, kicked a goal. And I, and you know what? Out of respect for Matt Wright, I did not put him in those in, in that in that game. Good. Well, Because I, I really like Matt Wright. He led the goal kicking that year. Was it that year? Yeah. Uh, it, it was a year. It was definitely a year. Do you know how many goals he led the team with in that in like, the year? It was like twenty six or something. Twenty two. Oh, that's he won the goal kicking with twenty two goals, mate. Can you believe that? Jeez. Charlie does that. I swear Charlie did that in like four weeks last year. Yeah. Yeah. Grim. Grim. Good footballer though. Yeah. Good footballer. I think the reason why we're talking about these losses actually lends us to where we can, where we are, and where we hopefully will get to. North's one of the teams that we owe one back to. The, 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 I, I would, I would say so as well. And I've actually got down in my notes here. Was this the lowest point? Like this, I mean, I mean this game kind of represents the the season of a whole and the the club in, in itself. Winning two games the whole year, having players like Matt. Oh, Shaw you mean the whole. And- do you mean the yeah, whole like, year? Yeah, oh, on yeah. a whole, on a whole, yeah, yeah, on a yeah. whole, yeah. Mate, when you're going into games saying to yourself, "Oh, I hope we can just show something for one quarter," you are at the lowest of low. Yeah, it was a bad time. Oh it my was a, god, it was a bad time. And oh I and I, and, I, and I think it, I think we kind of it helps that we're semi good now because we can look back at this now and, and laugh and appreciate. Do you know what? And, I sometimes get frustrated with people that are just like overly toxic and negative. And now that we've done this exercise, I'm reminded why they like that. Really? Yep. I would actually say my mind goes the other way. I'd go. Mine does, but I that doesn't mean it's going to be like that for everyone. But I, I it's bringing up that anger again. It's really frustrating me. Okay, I, I see where you're coming from. I'm looking at more. I'm looking at it more from the perspective of even even twenty. One in comparison to eighteen. I mean, you look at you look at. I mean, we just spoke about again. I was in twenty one. Twenty one was bad, but I mean, in comparison to eighteen. So you can you always got to have that perspective. Definitely, correct me if I'm wrong, but we had lost Doherty in that preseason before twenty eighteen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah. So that was a factor. Um, I think Gibbs had requested a trade. He had gone, and it didn't go through. Or no, he had gone. Oh, he had gone. Yeah. Yeah. He, so he, we had lost him. Yeah. So the year after Adelaide won the flag. Yeah. Oh, you could sorry. make he didn't win the flag. You could make the case that twenty one was worse because it was like, all right, yeah, guys, you're, you're in the yeah, you're in the sixth year. Like, you know, you're playing north in round nineteen, bottom of the ladder. Um, you know, you've just beat Collingwood and uh. Well no, well North weren't anything crash hot that year either. In, no, in no, twenty eighteen. No. So, yeah, even, I mean, even in like, we did, we haven't really spoken about, like, obviously, we haven't, didn't speak about the game in 20, in last year, where we were losing at half time and scrapped over line because North had no key defenders and we had, we have two of the best key forwards in the comp. I do agree with you on the fact that North are just that team that are just there and there's just something. Like, when was the last time we had a convincing win against North? Can you remember? Probably 22, huh. probably 2022, 20, but. Was that convincing? I think it was. What did we do Jack, that remind me? Jack Carroll's first first kick, first goal. Oh yes, yes, yes. Okay, yeah, that was that was a bit of a, a good convincing win. Yeah, okay. But I mean, for every nah. one of nah, f- I'm talking a hundred. Nah, I want like uh, that's where I think the ne- the evolution of the team is like. Can you put the teams that you used to put you to the sword like North Melbourne did? Can you do that to them? And I mean, like a hundred points. Like a yeah. demolition job. Okay, okay. Th- th- that's the next. I mean, we did to West Coast last year, but yes. 
but 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 in a similar vein, like I feel like we've also like just like we've always had a pretty good record against West Coast. But like I'm talking about it from like a holistic perspective. I mean, West Coast are probably one of the worst sides we've seen like in a, in a long long time. North are at least semi competent. So if we can rock up on Friday and put them to the sword, I think it does show something a lot about like it does show that next evolution of the group, right? And I and I think we are and I think we are past the point of um, we just need to learn how to win before we before we can win well. We have learned how to win now. Now it's time to win well consistently. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And I think, and I think, looking back on eighteen and twenty one, and even other years that, like I think nineteen as well, we got t- done by ten goals when they were bottom as well. Like these games are like okay, they were able to do it to us when they were bad. We're good now, and they suck, and they're worse arguably. Why can't we do it now? Who would win twenty? 20- 24 North Melbourne or 2018 Carlton? 24 North. I think so too. Yeah, no, nah, for sure. For sure. For sure. So. What I about mean, 2021 Carlton? Are we. Uh, what I'm trying to find is where they're at. Where the, where, where the where, level which, is. Where which, the level where, is. Yeah. Who you're comparing their team to, which version of us? I think that them right now is probably if if I had to pick a team from from like recent times of calm, it'd be twenty nineteen, early twenty nineteen. Okay. But I I I think I think this, I mean, in twenty twenty one we we couldn't win clearance. Yeah. And and that's North's game this in this era. So mm. like, I mean, I mean, I'm just looking at I'm just looking at the team that North kind of had. I mean, if we look at like their Sean Higgins, like Jed Anderson, Ben Cunnington, Jack Zabel, Luke McDonald. Oh, those are some pretty big, big bodies. Yeah, 2018. Like Jared White was playing for the team. Robbie Tarrant, Ben Jacobs, Tom Goldstein, a young Josh and a young Luke Davis Uniac. So, yeah, I don't know. I feel like it's I feel like it's a very interesting kind of it's a very interesting discussion we can have with probably a lot of the a lot of the teams that we, we can that we're going to discuss in this series. Um, another interesting footnote from that game as well, which I um, which I came across. Firstly, this was the only time we've ever played in Hobart, so one and done, eighty point loss, good stuff. And this was also Lockie O'Brien's debut, which is a sad indictment, I think. On shout out to Lockie O. Where's he at now? There's the he's. Local footy team. I don't shame. Know. Yeah, shame. Shame at Lockie, mate. What are you doing? I, I, I brought him up. Give him the props. Where give fish the props, mate? What about fish? It wasn't his debut, was it? I, 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 yeah, I see you've, you, you've, you've done this. Yeah. You like that? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, mean, I feel like if we ever come up against former Carlton players, they automatically make the thumbnail. Did you put SPS for last year against West Coast? I don't think he played. He did. First Did time, he? yeah, first time. Well, then no, I didn't. <laughs> well, then, there you go. No, you know what? Actually, I take that back. Fish deserves a thumbnail. None of the rest, the rest of them don't. Like Dow doesn't. SPS really? didn't. Really? Yeah. What did Dow do? Yeah. With all due respect to Zach, love Zach. Yeah, but out of the, out of that group, you know, that were with us that left, which one was the best? And gave us the most. How are you would, thinking about this? <laughs> I would say, I would say, probably fish. Yeah, I'd say it's, probably fish. There's no argument. <laughs> yeah, but 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 I don't think you can discard like Dow. Like yeah. I think he really. Yeah, fish won games off his own boot. Played a hundred games. One um, game. Go name me one. Which one? Name me a game that Zach Fisher won off his own boot. Round 10, 2022, winning goal. Round 1, 2022, important goal, winning goal. Okay. Kick four against West Coast, 20... One. 20? No, 20, 20. 20? 20, 20. Came yeah, back off yeah. the eight-week uh, ankle yeah. injury. Yeah, what a win um, that was. Yeah. Yeah, played well against the Saints late in the year when we beat them. So um, did Paddy Dow kick the, kick the goal. Yeah, we're not did talking Paddy, about Paddy Dow. The but question Paddy was about Paddy Dow. Uh, uh, Paddy Dow won games off his own boot. He won that game off his own boot. As many as Fish did. For, that's I think that's I think that's a besides the point. Really. No, that's exactly what the point is. That's the only point we're talking about. But uh, but I don't I don't think that that discredits Paddy Dow's ability to be on a thumbnail. Any who gave us more? Who gave us more? 
Dale yeah, but, Fisher. But, yeah, but I don't I don't think you're going to limit it to one former Carlton player being on a thumbnail. That's the only reason we're talking about this because that's the question. I think Paddy Dow also deserves to be on a thumbnail. And when we're versus St Kilda, I think he should be on, on the thumbnail. I'll take it into consideration, but how many oh, games did Paddy Dow play? Go, do, do you want me to do some research? Do, do you want to know what he did in this game? Yeah. Paddy Dow had 10 touches. Zach Fisher yeah. had 13 and he kicked two behind. Yeah, you see that? <laughs> yeah, fine. There you go. There, there, um, you see there, that? It's very, there you go. Bang. <laughs> Paddy Dow played. Paddy Dow's played 78, 73 games. I rest my case. Mate, Fish is a life member of the Carlton Football Club. What do you mean? I love Zach. I love Zach. Zach's awesome. I don't think you do. I, don't I, do. I, I, I love Zach. I love I love Paddy. I love all of them they used to play. I right? like Paddy. No, I love Paddy. That's a lie. I do love Paddy. Yeah, well, then why are you giving him shit for? I'm not giving him shit. I'm just saying Fish was the best out of all of them. Yeah, but you're discrediting his abilities. You, no, I'm just saying be- Fish was the best out of all of them. But both of them can be good. Yes, but Fish was the best out of all of them. <laughs> yeah, but I, I think I think the fact that you're so adamant on this shows a little bit different. Yeah, because there's no there's no way it's not Fish. I think I think Paddy Dow played a harder role at a harder time, and was given um, and was given an unfair crack at things. Well, tune in, ladies and gentlemen, for when we play St Kilda and Ari Stamatakos gives us uh, oh, the fan Paddy and and stock, and stock as well. Shout out stock. Shout out stock. Yeah, we yeah, do shout out stock. stock. Actually, I'd put stocker on a thumbnail before Patty. The disrespect. Mm. Satterfield? Will? Love Will. No, when no. we, oh, can I just say, when we versus Adelaide, I've got a great story to tell about Will Satterfield. So just tune in for we versus Adelaide in a couple of weeks. If you're still around, mate, are we going to get you next week? Once again, I'm behind the man as well. Are you a man of your word? We'll just find out. Tune in. Tune in, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I'll give you friends and family discount for, for the booking. Yeah. yeah no All right, Ari. See you next week. Ciao, ciao.